Welcome to the second part of the first person tutorial miniseries. I'm Steven and this time we'll be looking at how to make the player shoot and kill an enemy. If you haven't seen part 1 there's a link in the annotation to the side. Feel free to check that out first then come back here to continue, otherwise let's get stuck in. The first thing we want to do is write a script to control the player's ability to shoot. Right click in the assets folder and select create a C sharp script and name that script player underscore shooter. Then double click and open it in the editor. I'm using mono develop again, but if you prefer to use Visual Studio, that's fine. The first thing we want to do is access the camera. Declare private camera player cam. Then in start, we want to make sure the camera selected is that which the script is attached to. Type player cam equals get component camera. This grabs the camera component from the object the script is attached to. Next, we want to place the cursor center screen and make it invisible. To do this, we set cursor.lock state equal to cursor lock mode dot lock and set cursor.visible to false. Okay, so that covers everything we need in the start method. Next, we want to go to the update method. This is where the main bulk of the script is. Before we start writing code, let's discuss raycasting. Raycasting is the method which we are using to allow players to shoot. We cast an invisible ray from an origin point and it shoots out in a specific direction. We check in the script if any objects intersect the ray. Like when you shoot a bullet, it starts from the gun and goes towards the object you're aiming at. We don't need to go over any of the complicated maths involved, but instead gain a basic understanding of the concepts behind it. So let's start coding. First thing we need to check is for the player clicking the mouse. Type if input dot get mouse button down zero and here zero refers to the left mouse button. Then we want to get the point at the center of the screen next. Type vector three point equals new vector three player cam dot pixel width over two player cam dot pixel height over two and zero. So the middle of the screen is half the pixel width and half the pixel height. And we store these coordinates in a vector 3, but we set the Z value to 0 because we only need X and Y. Now, we want to create a ray. So type ray ray equals player cam dot screen point to ray point. Screen point to ray creates the ray from the camera and it travels through the point we have assigned it to. To get information from the raycast hit location, we use raycast hit hit. Then if physics.raycast ray out hit, then game object hit object equals hit.transform.game object. This gets the object the raycast hit. And we want to add a note as well because we need to launch a cool routine in response to the hit. Now, we need to create a coroutine that we can call whenever the player shoots an object. We will create a sphere at the point the ray collides with an object and then remove it after a set time limit. Type private IE enumerator shot gen vector 3 pause. Coroutines use IE enumerators. Then we want to type game object sphere equals game object dot create primitive primitive type dot sphere and Sphere.transform.localScale equals new vector 3, 0.2f, 0.2f, 0.2f. And sphere.transform.position equals pause. So we create the sphere, then we set its size and position, which is what those three lines do. Next type yield return new, wait for seconds, 1. Yield tells the coroutine where to pause and wait for seconds is used to decide how long to pause for. And then type destroy sphere. After the time limit, we need to remove the game object and destroy does this. If we go back to the update method, we can now add in the coroutine by typing start coroutine shot gen hit dot point like that. We should now be able to shoot objects in the scene but first we want to have a pointer in the center of the screen as a reference point to help us aim. We use void on GUI for this 
and we use this because it is called every frame and it draws after a 3D scene is rendered. This way, it stays on top of the scene. Then type int size equals 12. Float pause x equals player cam dot pixel width over 2 minus size over 4. Then float pause y equals player cam dot pixel height over 2 minus size over 2. Then GUI dot label new rect pause x pause y size and size again. Then do a comma and an asterisk in quotes. So again, we get the middle of the screen and then draw an asterisk at this point. And that's the player underscore shooter script finished. Make sure you save and then go back to Unity and see how this works now when we put it into practice. This script needs to be attached to the main camera. Select it from the hierarchy and drag the script over to the inspector. Click play now and you can shoot around the scene. You can see here the spheres appearing and then disappearing. We want to create an enemy object now. So start by pushing the player out of the way. Right click in the hierarchy and create a cube. Rename it enemy, reset its transform, set the Y scale to 2 and Y position to 1. We need to also create a material. You can apply materials to objects to color them. So right click in the assets folder and select create material. Name it matte enemy color. With the material still selected, click on the albedo in the inspector. Choose the color you want your enemy to be. Then drag that material onto the enemy object and you've done it. This is how your enemy will appear. You can mess around with the other values in the material to get it to look just right. And next we want to get into the code behind the enemy. Create another C sharp script. Then name it enemy underscore shot. Open the script in the editor and delete both start and update because we won't be needing them for this. First thing we want to do is create a function called got shot. So type public void got shot. This checks if the enemy has been shot by the player. Inside got shot there will be a coroutine called die, but first we need to make that. So type private IE enumerator die. We want to have the enemy rotate, stay for a moment, then disappear. And to do that we type this.transform.rotate minus 75, 0, 0. So it rotates minus 75 degrees on the X. Then type yield return new, wait for seconds. 1.5f, so similar to how we did earlier, only this time we wait for one and a half seconds. Then like before, we destroy the object by typing destroy this dot game object. Save this script and jump back over to our player underscore shooter script. In our update method, we need to create an instance of enemy underscore shot. Create a space before the coroutine and type in enemy underscore shot target equals hit object dot get component get component enemy underscore shot. Then check if our ray hits an object by typing. If target is not equal to null, then target dot got shot. Got shot is from the enemy underscore shot script here and this calls the coroutine die. Then put in the else statement. If we don't hit an object, we run the coroutine shot gen. Make sure all scripts are saved and then go back to Unity. As we can see here, when I shoot at the ground it creates the little balls and then if we aim and shoot at an enemy, they rotate and disappear after a second. Let's restart the scene and get a better angle on this. 
and from this angle we can see more clearly what's happening. And with that we have come to an end of this tutorial. Let's do a quick recap on what we have covered. We have learned about raycasting, we have generated objects in the scene around a point, we've created a very simple graphical user interface and wrote a script to kill an enemy. So thank you all for watching this video, make sure to subscribe for more tutorials like this and I'll see you next time.